Hi guys, spoiler alert, we um, spoil movies in this show. This week you can see we spoiled a bunch of, we're gonna talk about M. Night and Split and that movie. So if you haven't seen Split or any of M. Night's films and you know what I'm spoiled, you might wanna take a break, go watch a few, come back, watch the show. You've been warned. Yep. Is there anything <laughs> more satisfying than a well-delivered twist ending to a good movie or TV show? I submit to you that there really isn't. I mean, half the movies you see, let's be honest, they're kind of pre predictable bores. Another quarter of them get on by pure spectacle alone. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with that, of course, but even the biggest, baddest, most CGI-filled set pieces, they kind of pale in comparison to the satisfaction that you get from seeing a perfect twist delivered on a film. I mean, from Norman Bates' mother to the true identity of Kaiser Soze, twist endings, they put movies on the map. I mean, twist endings are so powerful, in fact, that they can make entire careers. I mean, famously, it's the hook that Hitchcock hung his hat on. But Hitch is long gone, we don't really need to talk about him, but there is only one man who's come close to the turns that that old master once did. That's right, we're gonna talk good things about M. Night Shyamalan. You didn't see that one coming, did you? So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey, welcome to Enjoy the Show. The, you know, the show that tries to talk about why we like movies and TV and why they're good. Today I am joined with Lynn Marquis and Tyler Coe. Um, Hello, John. Hello. Hi, John. How are you guys doing? I'm fantastic. How about you? <laughs> I felt Tyler, very how are you? I'm fantastic You're as well. You're fantastic. Um, really quick, this episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Thank you, Blue Apron. Um, also, just a heads up, we are going to do a little segment at the end of this episode where we're going to reply to comments you guys left from last uh, week's episode. We're going to do that at the very end, so stick around to the end of the show and we might, you know, talk about what you said about the movies and the shows and us. Um, and that'll be fun. I, I came prepared today. You did. I you think. came prepared um, with um, very oh, memento-esque uh, notes. Well, I didn't. I, I don't remember doing any of this, but like apparently I wrote this yeah. last night. Well, you black out a lot. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. Tyler gets. What a twist. That's not, that's not a twist. Tyler's an alcoholic that's not that didn't should go to counseling and really shouldn't be here right now. Yeah. It's only if it's a problem. Yeah. Let's jump into it, okay, right? Okay, so like, to start off, to, to kind of break the ice of us talking about all these fun little twist things, um, I, I wanted to give everyone here and in comment section uh, a chance to brag. One of people's favorite things they like, I think they like to brag about for movies is if they can call an ending before it occurs. There's like some sort of power that you have. So I wanted to know, <laughs> even though you're dick. basically ruining <laughs> what like a writer and director all were trying to accomplish with like, Really just, you know, surprising at the end. If you call it, you kind of ruin it. But we all do it. Is there any time you've called a TV or movie before it happened? Yeah. And I mean, there are those, there's kind of those two types of people. Like, you actually really do figure it out. Or you're that guy that always thinks he knows. Yeah. And you're talking throughout the movie like, oh, I know it's going to happen. Oh, that's going to, he's going to do that thing. Yeah. Fucking hate that guy. Yeah. Don't be that guy. But for me, I do have a legit What's one. What's yours? Uh, spoiler alert, right? Or yeah, we, we already did our that. spoiler alert at the beginning. Um, so, Mr. Robot. Oh, Mr. Yeah, robot yeah. was a, a robot the was, Oh, I feel yeah. bad for the crew. Does everybody in the crew seen Mr. Robot? You guys see Mr. Robot? Too okay. bad he's about yeah, to spoil it. It's a good show. You should uh, watch it. So about it was like episode like three or four. I started to feel like this is very much like Fight Club, a movie that we're probably gonna really? talk about. Really? You today. figured out that early? And I was like, somebody's not real. I didn't know if it was the daughter or the dad, but I was like, it has to be I didn't see uh, it at all. It, it has to be his dad. Like that, I actually that, just haven't seen Mr. Robot. Yeah. It's actually a, it's, that's why I keep hearing you can't tell me that. It no. maybe is like USA's because it's on USA, isn't it? Yeah, it was USA. It's like Network. their only good show. You're yeah. saying Suits isn't a good show? Oh, actually, yeah, Suits is, I've seen Suits. That's You're not only, bad. Kidding, but, I, I've okay. seen Suits. Yeah, yeah, I knew you were. Kidding. I watched an episode yeah. of Suits. It wasn't that bad. I've seen Suits. Two good-looking guys that are well dressed. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, I had it on mute. That's why it was good. Oh, is that yeah. It? I fast forward uh, through the like last thirty seconds of it to get to Mr. Robot. That's how I know Suits. <laughs> that's how you know Suits. Because it, it precedes you, Mr. Robot. But yeah, so you, that's you pretty know? good. I didn't that see was, Mr. Robot. That was the only one I did. Yeah. Do you have any, Lynn? Movie or uh, TV that you called? Pretty much every M. Night Shyamalan movie since The Sixth Sense. Really? More or less. You called... Well, it's only because he set up the thing of being Mr. Twist, and so the entire time whenever you're watching one of them... You called you're Unbreakable? You're always thinking, yeah. That he was the bad guy and everything like that? Yeah. Wow. Because it was Samuel Jackson <laughs> just, you know, being Samuel Jackson. He couldn't be just like, you he know, a nice like little a guy in a... maniacal... Yeah. 
It was it was pretty odd. Man, I have never called. You didn't think he was crazy and that he wanted. I thought he was crazy. I didn't think he was the one who caused what all that. What do you think his motivations really... were for that? He was to find a it. big comic book fan. He wanted to find a superhero. That's, oh, that was, that's where okay, you went. Yeah, yeah I was like, he wanted to are. find a superhero. Because you related to Samuel Jackson. That makes sense. So, just totally. Want... But I mean, come on, uh, signs, the the heavy-handed like water glasses everywhere. I didn't get that either. That was really? a cute little quirk that the girl no, had. That they shoved religion. down your throat every single scene. Yeah. And they would pan over like. Four I didn't or five even call glasses. the village. I didn't even call the village. It, it's the holy water, basically. What okay. that's what signs so, really? was. Yeah, I mean, he's a pastor dealing with his people? faith and like. Oh wow. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that metaphor goes over, but that's what I took from it. I do actually have a few more now that I think about really? it. Really? Um, Goodable hunting. What's the twist in that? I always knew that it was not Matt Damon's fault. Always. That, that did what? Oh, God. Have you never seen Goodwill Hunting? What was Matt Damon's fault? He Remember at the Robin end, Williams, Robin Williams, right? he's like, it's not your fault. Oh. It's not your fault, oh. Matt Damon. <laughs> that was a good joke right there that you didn't fucking laugh at. Jesus. You know, I love it when stand-ups stand get comic. on stage like, and they yell at me. Laugh. Laugh. Yeah. It's funny. We went to <laughs> Bill Burr together, remember that? And he just yelled at the audience? Well, yeah, because he was doing a show. Like um, a, I feel like Jeb Bush right now. Clap. Everybody, Everyone clap, clap. Everybody Everyone clap. clap. Everyone clap. Uh, now. Nah, the crew's being nice. <laughs> <laughs> There's no better right. sound than a pig. My oh. favorite oh. twist that I called was, um, I, I was very proud of this. I called the ending to Westworld. I still have I called it specifically the man, I called yeah. the man in Black. I called the man in Black. And I did it within about five episodes, um, and I was very happy that I was right on that because I don't. I, obviously, I don't call twists very much because I'm just oblivious to them. And you, and you sit on it because you're waiting. You're like, no, I like, called it out. Well, no, like you sit on it in your brain, like I hope it's right. I hope it's right. Yeah. And when you get to the end, and you like, you feel like, oh fuck. Yeah. Since I haven't seen the end of it, can I guess what the twist is? Of Westworld. Yeah. Is it that it's two different timelines and that he's yeah. the same? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. I called a twist. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I like that. Uh, I can't wait to but, watch uh, that now. You gotta agree. Even uh, <laughs> it's good. It's good. Even like you know, getting a good twist best. ending, like when when it happens on the movie, it, that's satisfying. It's also satisfying to call them. It's like a fun little game while watching a movie. So I think it's still enjoyable. Oh yeah, um, as long as it doesn't take you out of the movie and it's not what you're thinking about the entire time. I like it. Right, as long as it doesn't ruin Which it. Is kind I mean, of did you still enjoy thing. Signs and Unbreakable? And did Simpsons? I enjoy Signs? I enjoyed Unbreakable. All right, so after announcing himself with one of cinema's really greatest twist endings in The Sixth Sense, Shyamalan, he went on to deliver a few more all-timers. Our man was on a really good roll there in the beginning. He made Haley Joel Osment seem cool. He convinced Bruce Willis to actually act in two movies. And he gave us one of, I think, all-time weirdest alien invasion movies starring Mel Gibson, no less, right before he went kind of crazy. Um, the Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, Signs, these films, they marked the first Shyamalan naissance. And then came The Village. It was a feature-length Twilight Zone episode with a C-minus twist ending. And then came Lady in the Water. It was a complicated fairy tale riff that was so-so at best. Not really. Amazingly, things then took a turn for the worse. Er, and the happening happened. And we don't want it to have. And then for some reasons, that remained unclear to anyone operating at above a third grade education level. M. Night was tasked with bringing Avatar The Last Airbender series to life in theaters. Um, but after treading water with the underwhelming After Earth, if anyone can remember that film, Shyamalan, he decided to get back to brass tacks. He joined forces of Bloomhouse, a production studio starting by uh, Bloom, and quickly rattled off two pretty solid B movies. First came The Visit, a found footage film which played on our natural distrust and mortifying fear of old people. And if you're scared of diapers, that movie's very, very scary and wrong. Oh. And second Weird. came Split, which brought back the classic Shyamalan twist. I mean, after sitting through an above average supernatural thriller, we realized we'd actually been watching a sequel to Shyamalan's second film, Unbreakable. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan Trojan horsed us with a sequel to one of his own movies. Just think about that for like two seconds. Who else would have had the balls to do that and actually pulled it off? It's totally undebatable. We've entered the second Shyamalanissance, and I'm hoping it continues on for a while. Would you guys agree that we're kind of hopefully in a re resurgence of Shyamalan? Was that just a natural? <laughs> uh, I, I would agree in the same sense in the way that you started uh, that monologue is that I think it's going to be very short lived. You think it's going to be a roller coaster like he did before? I, I think, you think so. he's going to blow his load? Uh, I think he already blew his load with Split. I, I don't see, so, you know, for uh, those of you that have seen Split, 
Obviously, you know, the ending was a setup for a sequel. Shyamalan's come out it's and talked about universe. that he's, he's going to do a sequel. It's all in the same universe. Yep. I don't know how he's going to pull that off. I feel like that is so... It, we're so far removed from Unbreakable that the timing is off that people are going to have to go back and get familiar with the characters again. Yeah. I want to see how he's actually going to be able to do that. It's going to be really tough. That's almost 20 years. Yeah. But by, by when you think about it, by the time it's even made... 20 years of having to remember a storyline here and then come back and connect it in the present. It wasn't a super difficult concept it, to grasp. It, it wasn't, but it's going to be hard to get viewers to go and see that movie because they're going to be like, wait, Samuel Jackson's, what, okay, Bruce Willis is Superman? What's going on? I will agree <laughs> like, with you. <clears throat> I will agree with you for different reasons. Um, I don't really care for another Unbreakable movie, um, mostly because, let's face it, sequels never really live up to the first one, or, or hardly ever do. I'm sure people can think of some examples. That... I'll, I'll give you two. Which Actually. one? Aliens. 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 Actually, so rare, though. It's no, so rare. There's, there's a few Indiana more. Indiana Jones is another one I would say. Uh, uh, no, not Temple of Doom, yeah. but, but... Empire Strikes Back was, yeah. was yeah. awesome. Godfather 2, in my opinion, is better than Godfather 1. I would say modern sequels are having a hard time. bad opinion. Modern sequels are having a hard time. Modern sequels, I would agree. Like, rough, rough time making them uh, um, and And just personally, like... What I loved about Shyamalan, and I talked about early on, is that he had such cool original ideas early on. And um, I, Lady in the Water was, was based on a story that was written by his children, essentially, and uh, Airbender was an adaptation. I don't know where The Happening came from. What? Nobody knows huh? where The Happening came what? from. It's still um, one of my favorite comedies, though. What are you talking about? <laughs> what? The Happening? What? Yeah. What? Did what? you like The Happening, Tyler? Are you eyeing my lemon drink? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? I loved um, what Mark Wahlberg came out to say when someone asked him, like, why did he do the happening? He said, M. Night said I could play a scientist and I didn't have to be, like, a boxer or a bouncer for well, once in my life. Well, it's the same thing. He played an inventor in the, uh, the latest Transformers. And the <laughs> way they was. made him do it was they put glasses on him and said, just talk about inventing. And you're an inventor. Did you see the last, the one with him? I haven't seen of any of them beyond the it's, first three. Oh, God, it's one of my favorite Michael Bay films, just because of how weird of a parody he's become of himself as far he as has. product placement and explosions. There's one scene where Mark Wahlberg grabs a guy by the shirt that's, like, basically a nerd wearing glasses, like the guy, and he grabs a Bud Light and slams it in front of him <laughs> with the label out and throws it down and then, like, runs off to My all-time favorite uh, amazing. product placement shot was in... So I saw the first Fast and Furious film, and then I think I saw the second one, and then I didn't see any... And then I just saw the most recent you don't really one. Have to. It's not I gonna... didn't. What was it seven? How did seven you know what was going on? How could you follow the plot? What was the most recent one? Uh, uh, fa fast and the, just the, Fast and Furious. The Fast and the, the Furious. Fast right? and Furious. And there was like, it might as well have been Fast and Furious brought to you by Corona. Is what it was. Like Vin Diesel made such he a blatant Corona. reference to Coronas at a, at Alamo Draft House. Whenever you went to go see it, they had the uh, Dom's bucket of Corona. Oh man, can... I love yeah. when Alamo does those things though. When they do, when they do uh, yeah, the theme drinks, themed drinks. Stuff. Love drafts. So to that point right there, um, as far We've as... We've now like, started talking about product placement. I know, I know. Uh, I hold up my drink? Not to, the, not, a, not, a, to, not to product placement. We've now started talking about product placement. But to Shyamalan creating characters, like it's funny that he's like, Mark Wahlberg said like, oh, he's going to let me be like a scientist. He made you a third grade teacher. Like, and that character wasn't unique or, or interesting at all. Shyamalan does better when he keeps it tight. Yeah. When it's smaller and he doesn't have to go all of these different places... It's good, and I think that's why people like Split because it was so streamlined. Mm -hmm. It was a very uh, straightforward story of like an anticipation it was essentially, of what to come. It was a it was like a bottle episode of a TV show turned into TV form. I mean, the only two sets in the entire that's movie why he had are nine million dollar budget. Right, yeah. are the his home away with it. and the it's psychiatrist's paid. office. Yeah, and I mean, you know, start off in that parking lot and everything like that. But other than that, they just stayed there. Um, it's a small budget film because it was it was the second one that he made with Bloomhouse uh, and Bloomhouse makes low budget B movie films that are financially successful Insidious um, Insidious Paranormal Activity, Paranormal Activity uh, Sinister Sinister Purge Oh yeah Purge they do all three yeah. yeah they and these movies like whether you like these movies or not and somehow I realized I've seen all three Purge movies I, I haven't seen the most recent one I didn't actually yeah. want to see all three somehow I've seen all three I just wanted to see Ethan Hawke die in every single one of them <laughs> I was very disappointed that he didn't die again in the second one uh, but they Spoilers. they cost less than ten million dollars basically um, the majority of Bloomhouse's movies cost less than ten they actually made Whip as well which yeah. is one of our favorites yeah on the show all-time favorite on enjoy the show yeah and uh, I hated the majority of the films make t cost less than ten million dollars to make and then the majority of them make about ten times their budget like all of purges movies have yeah. made over a hundred million dollars insidious there's like 
four insidiouses. They've all made like 90 to 100 million dollars. They all have kind of the same form. Like the first purge was literally just inside of a house. Yeah. And then paranormal activity, activity cost just inside of a house. Fifteen thousand right. dollars. Made 200 million dollars domestic box Which office. Still seems like a bit too much. But it was it was it was also you got to think of when Paranormal Activity came out. It was before found footage was a thing. It was it was after it was it was uh, before Blair Witch Project. I didn't know that. Well, I guess I guess Blair Witch was the first one. You're right. Um, but I guess I'll say this: it was before it became an old shtick. Yeah, it didn't. Um, it, didn't it hasn't. Well, it's the one that started off the whole train of everyone wanting to do yeah, like found, found footage, footage things and, like, and stuff catacombs like that. Catacombs and then yeah. just like everything else. I think one of the things that Shyamalan did, and I almost wonder if Bloomhouse got to him in this way. Because kind of like you were talking about earlier, Lynn, when you're watching a Shyamalan film, you're waiting for the twist at the end. That's because that's what he started off as. Right. Yeah. This one, it was different, and the tone was different. All you, the, the entire uh, um, A to B point was not to get to the twist, but was the anticipation of the beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, so he created, cool. actually, like... Exactly. Well, he's a great storyteller, and he does it really well with a camera. Mm -hmm. Like, he's a very entertaining director. When well, that's why he's not great with directing people, but he's great at story and yes. getting it across. It's through. funny you say that about the camera. I was having a discussion with Mikey Newman from Oozes Mikey, and we were talking about Shyamalan's career, and I was saying how one of the things I didn't like about the middle of his career, where it really went downhill, was that I felt like his eye and the way he shot stuff, like Unbreakable, such intentional shooting, like oh, that opening great. train sequence where yeah. it's just back and forth or between the, the seats. Yeah, and the, the scene whenever there's the uh, the patient dying and you can see him slowly bleeding oh, yeah, out and as like, you zoom in. Or his use of foreground, mid-ground, background is oh, yeah. amazing. Which and Michael I felt, Bay's really good at. He's so good. He really is. Fucker loves sweeping that camera and around he people's loves, noses. He loves putting lampposts in front of things. <laughs> he likes doing lampposts and then a robot, like fighting other robots. Um, <laughs> it's just robots in every It one really is. If you look in all of Michael Bay's film, there's a robot in every single movie. It's like Superman in uh, Seinfeld. Same uh, thing. But I felt like his eye went away, like the happening was still, I, it was like it was reminiscent there, but by the time it got to Avatar and it got to After Earth, it just was like, this wasn't even fun to watch visually. It's, it's and fun. then Split was, it felt even back to that style. It was back to, you know, that very, it wasn't like Sixth Sense or Unbreakable or Science, but it was still a very intentional way of shooting. And he used more POV kind of view kind of stuff. And it also didn't pull you out as much as it did. Yeah. Like it, it didn't pull you out as like, oh, this is a, a really great shot. No. But had some great zoom in, in shots really that really did. created tension uh, in that room and everything it, like it, that. To, uh, yeah. the, the, the last sequence of the film, and this is like the most debated part, and I guess we can kind of get into this. Um, every act is great, and then the third part really ramps it up when mm -hmm. he, the scenes of him it's running out back. into Philadelphia. Him, saying him. goodbye to a lot of his personas to let the beast come in was fucking oh, amazing. That um that fade in, fade out style thing they did where he transferred between characters throughout the city and she and, and him as as the female personality would say thank you to the other one. It was so orchestrally poetic. Oh, it was so and I loved it. It, it. it and then it ended in the the train with him doing that almost like a, a prayer to the beast and everything like that. It was a ritual. It was what he was yeah, doing. That was yeah. the whole reason why he had those girls there and all that stuff. It was just like the circle of chairs or whatever that are his 23 personalities yeah. all basically agreed on this folklore. Yeah. And then his crazy psychotic mind is what brought it into light. And so these are the things that he had to do in order to make the beast come out. Let's get this out of the way really quick before people think this is just a M. Night masturbatory session. Um, I'd, I'd do it. I'd jerk him off. I, I mean, that'd be a good story. Yeah. Uh, worst part of the film, I will say, were the two other girls. I felt like, uh, what's her name, Anya, who played the main girl? See, I don't even remember the other two girls. They were well, the, well, that's one of the reasons The other two why girls, the way they reacted to everything was not... Well, because M. Night, M. Night uses big names and kids for a reason, is because he's not great at getting things out of people. No, he's not. He's not great with directing people. He's great with everything else, and sometimes it, it gets to be too much for that, but he's just not fantastic. That's why, like... I you think always, M. Night can be good at directing people. Well, you, you always get, like, the, oh, uh, what... Signs. Everyone was very like blank expression I stuff love like that. Signs. That's why okay. Oh yeah. Actually, I, this reminds me. I want to ask a question. You really love signs. Let me ask a question. I ask. I've asked this to a lot of people when I talk about M Night with them. When did you fall off of the M Night wagon? The Village. That's, that's so you still like the signs. I like I signs. signs. I like signs. How did Village fare to you? Was it just the train wreck, or was it like I'm not feeling M Night so I, much I, anymore? I, I I actually really enjoyed uh, I I enjoyed the Village up until like you know the very end part. The ending I, is what ruined for a lot of people. And, and mm. it just it just wasn't. I, I wanted the monsters to be real, and I wanted there to be another twist. Everyone says everybody that. Everybody wants that, and well, that's the thing is that like 
I, I get it. That I love that M Night's original. That's why I love Nicolas Cage because he's fearless, and I love Tarantino because he does his own style. Like I really appreciate. You can those always guys. tell a Tarantino film but, in any shot. But when you're, you have to know that when people like when he's writing these scripts and so many eyes are on this, people were, had to be telling him like, dude, just give them the payoff. People are going to want these things to because be Because he started real. out his career with Sixth Sense, and he's but he stick, had to have he had to stick a lot of yeah, critics. A lot of critics around Village and the Happening said that his that his drop off of his quality was due to being very he's he, insular. He felt like he, he got just, very insular. Just I don't know. That's room. actually based on fact, but a lot of people right. were saying that. Well, it, it certainly came off that way. And with Split, you can tell there was a definite change in his direction. With, with building characters and the story, because you're right. If I could have Tarantino write the dialogue for a Shyamalan movie, that'd be awesome, because <laughs> that'd be great. the dialogue in, those, in his movies, are they're so fucking oh, well, he's one of those, I he's love the so dialogue in Village. Painful. There's that scene where they're uh, on the porch and it's and it's uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Bryce Dallas Howard and they're having that great scene with the fog in the background. He's confessing like that. He not needs, saying he doesn't have his moments, but like to, to your point with the character, the two girls in the movie. Mel Gibson and his family oh, around tough. that table when that's they're tough. all like we're in, they're inside their, the house. Their favorite meal. Their favorite meals and it, and it like Mel Gibson just. Escalates. I'm giving Mel Gibson all of that credit as like. But that's dialogue he wrote. Uses. Yeah. You know. That's dialogue that small, M. I wrote. Small moments. He's small not terrible. I can keep going. I'm breakable. Yeah. Well, let's he's... get to, I want to talk about the ending to Split, though. Okay. Because that's, I think, where a lot of people, again, it's like, that's you're almost on the Shyamalan train. You're either jumping off it at the end, <laughs> or you're rolling on to the next one. It's more of a roller coaster. Yeah, so, you just saw Split yesterday. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of the ending? Uh, at what part? And which I, which ending, I, I should say. Exactly. Because the there actual twist endings. for me, the actual, the because I hate, I hate saying it for M. Night Shyamalan. I hate saying the twist, because I don't want him to be... I want him to get away from that. Yeah. I want him just to be a good director. I think he does too. There, yeah. there, there was times in his career where, um, I can't remember what film, but he talks about how he didn't want to put his name on it because... Um, After like, Earth. I wouldn't want to put my name on that either. <laughs> <laughs> God, it was a bad movie. Yeah. Um, no, there were like movie projects that he had that he had available to him that he didn't want to put his name on because people would have been looking for the twist and he didn't want to brand which, that which movie is, that way. Which is a shame because he started out like getting really known for that. And now he's been pigeonholed into doing that over and over again. But then and he got I, to then he shifted it again and did it with Split. Well, that's, which is fair, but but it was it was it wasn't like the twist that made everything like you had to go back and watch every single scene and rethink it again. Yeah, there's like there's certain things that allude over to it, like the train that his dad died on was the same one that Bruce yeah. Willis got into a wreck in. Bruce Willis bumped into the the wife uh, in Unbreakable and saw him being abused as a child and stuff like that. That's not stuff that you have to watch again in order to really like with Six Sense. You have to watch the movie over again multiple times yeah, just to, to see if there's to any see all these little like, subtle yeah, like little things, things. Yeah. Yeah. these incredible scenes where it's like him sitting on the couch and it's like well instead of talking about it like did you like the twist or not like, I, I'd be more curious like how did the movie and it's like ending make you feel about the film and about M Night's just how did the movie make you feel well, more so I think what Lynn said there's endings yeah. Yeah. to split and that's where I think a lot of people have an issue so the, the main ending where the beast interacts with the girl it sees that she's gone through pain in her yeah. life yeah. so Self-mutilation because of child pure. abuse, which a lot of people are pretty iffy on. A lot of people who have suffered abuse were like, I don't like this. I don't like that you're championing this. Like, sexual abuse is a thing that makes you powerful. But um, I, think, I, I think a lot of people go into films with a little bit of their own perspective, and that can shift maybe what the director or the filmmaker is trying to do. What I took from the film more so on that subject was a movie about empathy. Mm -hmm. And that it was more about uh, empathizing with damaged people and empathizing with people that might be different from you or people no, that have that's, different that's story. A way, that's the way I took it. I'm just saying other people, that's why they had an issue with that particular if part If they would focus more on him being abused as a kid, I think that it would have made it a little bit more sense. Yeah. Because it really, because they showed way more scenes with her and stuff like that, which I understand why they had to have like that backstory for the initial payoff of why she gets away at the end. But they literally only had maybe what, like, there's one, one, scene. one scene where he's one underneath scene the bed, where he's right? underneath the bed, yeah. and, you don't, and that's it. You don't really know. And, and even then, it's like, he got hit with a wire hanger. So it's the very guy, American Psycho, yeah. like, it's not a big thing. I'm, uh, hers were way, way worse in comparison. It's sort of like, you should have shown why he is so beyond that he developed this DID that that happened as opposed to going back and showing hers and why she I cut think they, I think they, um, I think he probably was trying to reveal it more so with just the discussions that he had with the, the psychiatrist. Doctor. Well, that was basically the whole point of their interaction was the exposition. Right. Uh, I mean, they could have called her Dr. Exposition. Yeah. Which would have been. <laughs> which is also, she's the same chick from, uh, 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 was it, the, Betty, Betty, Betty Buckley? From, she's the same uh, one from Happening. Happening. Yeah, the, that's what I was going to say. My, she's the Are you crazy. eyeing my lemon drink? Yeah. <laughs> my I laughed out loud in the theater for, third. I was there with a, a girl and we both laughed like 
30 seconds. That movie's like, hilarious. When, when the lawnmower's going, going over the, the guy and he's laying there. And <laughs> that that, just that was the movie. It's like, all right, that's the kind of movie we're watching. I wish, I wish you we're watching gotten, a movie where people lay down and get run over by a lawnmower. If he would have gone feet first, that would have been so much better. <laughs> that was, and that was the one where it's like when or the lions, when doing? they're running away the from the lion. wind, God, yeah. when they're running away from the How wind. How scary was that breeze, though? <laughs> the way the grass flowed. Oh my God. You know how itchy grass is? Yeah, I was still rooting for him to run. I was like, run, the wind's gonna get you! How the oh. fuck did a studio put any money into that? Because it's M. Night Show! Oh. I had a friend, I actually had a friend, <laughs> I, have, I have a lot of, I've, coming from California, I have a lot of people that have tried to, you know, make it in the film industry and do that kind of thing. And I have my one friend who actually is pseudo-successful and actually has been in feature films and in TV series and that kind of thing. Um, he tried out and actually got really close to getting a part in no. The Happening. His part would have been the guy uh, that got ate by lions. The no, no, no. Oh, because that'd been uh, the roll. soldier that they meet about two thirds way into the film on the road. Yeah. And the soldier yeah, ends yeah. up getting killed or like that. Yeah. But I was so sad that he didn't get the part because then I could have ragged on him for forever for being in this train wreck of a film. Would that have been the peak of his career? Because um, that would have been great. You're like, man, whenever you peaked in the happen. In the happen. Do you remember that? <laughs> uh, God, that movie. Okay, so talking about more about this about split. Um, Oh, I think something that makes the if we keep talking about split. <laughs> the movie isn't just the twist though, which is what I think makes the movie a good movie to me. Yeah. It's a fantastic performance by James McAvoy for the entire film. You know he only had a month? No. He got signed on a month before. Well, he only do, needed a few accents. Do you know he didn't really Basically. audition? No, did he not? He, um, I know Joaquin Phoenix was originally up for the uh, the role. Shyamalan met him yeah, at I know. Ooh. Shyamalan met him at a at a Comic Con industry party. Really? Yeah, and he said it just like clicked. oh Xavier, and he's like oh M Night. It was actually was it really? there was like bungalows at an industry party, and the X Men film had a bungalow, and the Visit had a bungalow, and the Visit's bungalow was near the drinks, and so McAvoy was walking by, and he's like ah M Night, and they talked, and that's how they hit it oh, off. Oh, that's amazing. So he, yeah, he was a really good choice. I mean, he's, he's I love James actor. McAvoy. He's a great actor. Yeah. Now that I knew, I, I know range. that like Joaquin was in play. Like I fucking love Joaquin Phoenix. I you, do you too. Think, how do you think he would have done? I don't know. McAvoy is a. I thought it was. It's interesting. Everybody kind of has their favorite character from Split. You know, like is it Hedwig? Is it uh, the? Patricia. I actually like the the uh, the gay hairdresser or Barry. Or, or Barry. Barry. Yeah. I thought he was actually one of my I, favorites. I, I still don't think you ever actually saw Barry. You don't really. You did just, the end. No, no, you did the end. You no, no, no. Oh, when yeah, Barry comes out to clean. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. like all yeah. those interactions with yeah. the it was, was Dennis, Dennis playing Barry. Barry. Yeah. That was why he kept fixing chocolates and whatever. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, McAvoy's performance was great, and and watching some interviews about the film, um, they said that you know sometimes they'd get it like in a couple takes. Sometimes M Night would have them do, a, have uh, a McAvoy do like a million takes, like the the reveal of Patricia. They, they said they did like 24 takes, and it wasn't because McAvoy wasn't hitting it, it's because they were still trying to see what route they wanted to take, they, if they did one more menacingly, or yeah. more dramatic, or more humorous, they kind of went the more humorous route. Which is really route. hard for an actor to do, because... And I mean, keep it fresh, and that kind of thing. Well, I mean, I can't imagine, like, on scene, like, while you're filming it, having to round out a character like that, yeah. and go through all those different things, which I guess might be a better... I don't know. But the, it but seems tough. The Patricia reveal was great. It, it was. It, 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 it was know, fun. He, all of yeah. his... Uh, once again, it's why I never watched trailers for it. Because whenever I first heard about it, I never watched any of the trailers for it. And that's why that reveal was so much better, but I still had the ending spoiled for me. Watched the first trailer, got 30 seconds in, yeah. turned it off because I knew I wanted to see the watch? movie. Yeah. And I knew this, that trailers nowadays ruin so much. And I recently went back and rewatched the trailer, and it totally ruins yeah. like big things. The like second one, especially. The whole Hedwig like, window thing, the trailer ruins that. It shows that. it. It literally shows the window. Yeah. What? Shows, yeah. That was such a good source I of tension know. in the film. We're like, oh, is there a window? Is she going to get to it? What's going to happen? And then it's like the reveal of the drawing. That's why, that's why I like that they show a little bit in the first trailer, and in the second trailer it's like really trying to get people to to go and more and more information. And stuff I'd say my favorite. Still. I'd say what I loved about McAvoy was the the little things, the little quirks that he added for each character that gave them some uniqueness. Hedwig, his little um, walk, like the, his little waddle on the floor, his etc. Cetera. etc. Cetera. Um, Patricia's little like <laughs> her little like really facial like quirks. I loved the little his little like yeah, a little squinchy. Yeah, yeah. Like that, something yeah. like your aunt would so do. So good. Like that cute little. The little yeah. blowing of the candle. Yeah. When she's making the sandwich and she messes it up. Yeah. Well, which then is, which is kind of like characters bleeding through. That was know. Dennis, yeah, kind yeah. of going crazy about that. Because, yeah, uh, you know, the, the whole the way Dennis came in to be was keeping everything neat and clean. Mm -hmm. So imagine that probably bled into, since he was one of the first personalities that came in, it probably makes sense that the rest of them have sort of OCD traits. Um, with M. Night, we talked about how... Uh, oh, I didn't say what, where it dropped off for me. I actually liked The Village. I'm one of the people who liked The Village. Okay. Um, went into the happening, really hopeful. 
Uh, were you? How hopeful? I was very How high were your hopes before they I was were like, smashed? I liked them because I liked the village. Did Happening or Lady in the Water hap- uh, come first? I think Lady I, in the Water happened. And then, then the happened. And that, that probably got me questionable about it. I was you. like, what is this? You put I up your don't garden, think this is a normal M. Night film. Because he had a hell of a roller coaster. The fact that he started out literally at the top where a roller coaster would with Sixth Sense. Mm-hmm. And then kind of with Signs, you know. And Unbreakable then, came next. Unbreak- yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 1999, 2000 was an Unbreakable and then Signs. signs. Yeah. So he, he went up and, and he kind of plateaued and then just went really quickly down. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, the last airbender. <laughs> what happened after Earth? with the last airbender? I mean, this that's what frustrates me. The being, source material is so good. This is something and that frustrates me about, about filmmakers sometimes is that when, and not that I expect them to be perfect, but when a really? filmmaker or an actor or someone can show, what are you doing? He's Are you buying, buying your Chappelle Hell tickets? tickets? <laughs> <laughs> he Tyler priorities. said we had to end filming at a certain time because he needs to get his Dave Chappelle the tickets. The man has This is why Tyler has been quiet for like the past like 10 minutes. Are they sold out? You guys were doing good. Are they sold out? You were, I was listening to Karen's show. You God damn great. it. You weren't on the last episode. You're supposed to be my co-host for the show. And now you've checked out to get your Dave Chappelle tickets. It's saying there's something wrong with my info. That's <laughs> I don't know, but can you turn it around so the camera can see your credit card information? Yes. We'll let you guys know uh, next week if Tyler got his tickets. Um, cut that part. So, no, we're keeping that part in. So, I, when filmmakers show that they can accomplish and can execute a certain style or a certain thing and then show later on that they can just really fuck it up, I'm like, what happened? Because M9, even with The Village and even with Lady in the Water, he showed that he could still make okay movies and wasn't yeah. making train wrecks. And then The Happening was just, what is this? Airbender was a terrible movie like said, from what top was it, to bottom. What was it even about? Because I was so put off by uh, the Air, happening. I was, I was done. I knew that it was an adaptation of the, uh, uh, the uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yeah, it's a really, it's actually a really good animated it's show. Fantastic got, animated show. Yeah, and like the story and its fantastic the characters, the universe they have. I mean, he had so much to work with. But that's that uh, was one of the reasons why it was so bad. Uh, was because of people with these high expectations. And just for little life. weird things, like he changed the pronunciation of the main character's name. Ong. Like it's it's Ang. It? It's like literally said Ang yeah, in like the 50, TV show for forever, and then he's like Ong, and asked why he said it was more like culturally correct. I'm like, I don't know. they said how to pronounce it in the TV show. <laughs> you don't change it if they've said how you do it. I get it if like you're reading a book and they haven't said how you pronounce something's name. Hermione. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but even that, J.K. Rowling has come out and said that they're saying it right in the movies and yeah. people still pronounce it wrong and I really hate that. Uh, um, but yeah, Airbender and just, the, he had so much good source material and just ruined it. That yeah. was one where I, I thought he got horrible performances out of actors that should have done better. And granted, he was using like a lot of kids and stuff like that, but he's like he's not afraid of using the kids. The Earthbender's he's, just dancing around for five kids. minutes to do to one move. move. Rock. Yeah, I know, that was great. That's a weird sentence to say, but he does use kids a lot. He does use kids a lot. Yeah. He but does. he can do, uh, Haley Joel Osment was... Well, Haley Joel Osment was a great... Was fantastic. Well, besides, like, right after that, he did um, uh, Pay It Forward, which was... Oh, that yeah. movie's so sad. Yeah. It's very sad movie. Oh, it's so sad. Kevin yeah. Spacey's such a good And actor. then after that, uh, he did Entourage, and that's it. And his face never grew bigger. Yeah. No, he was on that. He did a show. It was a sex ed movie. Well, he did a sex ed movie, and then he was on a TV show. He's, he's, had, he's, a, he's had a weird. Stuff. He's actually got a few yeah. things. But wasn't he up. in that Lions one with Michael Caine and? Oh, secondhand lions. Secondhand lions. Yeah, that was actually shot here in Austin. Was it, was it really? That was uh, just a, at best an okay movie. There's a bunch There's of lions not. like roaming around Taylor. I don't think there was a single lion in the movie. <laughs> Fucking hate when that I think happens. there should be a rule that if you have a lion in the title of your movie, there has to be a lion in yeah. your fucking movie. You have like <laughs> Aliens 5, but it's just Meryl Streep like doing like fashion again. I'd like, still there's watch not a that. fucking alien in one of these. That'd be great. Um, it wasn't an alien in the first alien up till the end of it. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Which one, is the best part about the movie. Which is why I wish they kind of would have done more with the beast in this one. Why do you have, you're writing on your hands and you're, and there's well, we something were, on your wrist as well that wait, I haven't been able to see this whole wait, time. Which, oh. Do you have stuff on both arms? Oh shit! Okay, hold on. It's like Why is Tyler writing on himself? Study oh for the test. yeah. Um, Fincher. <laughs> what Fincher. are you doing? Fincher. Well, we were going to talk about you know David twists Fincher and movie? stuff like that. And oh, I, other directors that may have done good. Yeah, on because there's uh, obviously there's Hitchcock. You know, uh, Psycho was was one of the best. You know, yeah. there's, there's uh, you know I, I wrote down I know, you know Planet of ahead. the Apes, Usual Suspects. You know. Oh yeah, Planet of the Apes is a good twist. Empire I forget Strikes about that. Back. Yeah, but. To my, you know, Shaman is always considered the master of the twist, and I disagree. A great twist from the new Planet so of the films is that twist, head. they're actually good. They are actually good. It's because they have the Tim Burton awesome. one, which um, is terrible. My, I, I attest that David Fincher 
is the master of the twist, not Shyamalan. Really? I have the record to back it up. What you go it? through Seven, uh-huh. you go through Fight Club, you go through The Game, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Every single one of his movies has an unbelievable twist at the end. And is the twist of Seven that he doesn't tell you the ending? Is that what it is? Yeah, I mean the twist of like her head in the box. The you know what it is. Paltrow's head in the box. Um, I, I think that he really knows how to do it better than anybody else. Uh, I forgot about Gone Girl. Gone Girl as well. He always has a movie that ends. Oh in a yeah, twist. That's fantastic. I really think that. And Fincher. Did no, you call Gone Girl? Yeah. You called it? Oh no, I didn't call it. I, mm. I, Did you call it? No, I, I didn't. Um, anybody, anybody call anybody see Gone Girl? Call the twist at the end. No, that was a good one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you didn't really expect it. That was that's no, why that she, scene no, in Gone like, Girl oh. where Peel, Neil Patrick Harris gets just <laughs> yeah. just Swing. slid. Oh my gosh, so then, much blood so quickly. And then they keep going. Yeah. And then yeah, he's like he's he's she's 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 coming. Good, she's got good core strength. That's why that was what that was. Kegels. That was Kegels. That's what it was. I will clamp and cut. If that's Neil Patrick Harris wasn't gay before too. that, he would be gay after that event. Yeah. That's right. But if you don't know David Fincher, please go watch all of his movies. I, I, I think he is, he is head and shoulders. He, I don't want to, God, I don't want to bash Shyamalan, but Fincher's like a real director. Did Fincher do Social Network? Yes, he did. There's no twist in that one. No, there's not a twist in that uh, one. Twist is. Justin Timberlake was too. Uh, twist is, Fincher's an amazing director. Yeah, He's one of the best of all time. The twist time. of uh, Social Network is yeah. that the real guy, founder of Facebook, what's his name? Mark Zuckerberg? Is not as interesting as the movie. No, 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 he's not. Not at all. Um, so that was a killer. Eisenberg made him much more charismatic well, and, and, and interesting. Put Fincher and Aaron Sorkin together, they're going to make magic. So that, mm. that's what that is right there. I could talk about Aaron Sorkin all night, but that's We, we should do an Aaron Sorkin we should talk about Aaron Sorkin. We should do a David Fincher episode. I wouldn't be mad at David Fincher. I like David Fincher a lot. Yeah. But now that you're saying that he's good at twists and stuff, every time I watch one of his movies, now I'm going to be thinking about what the twist is going to be. Yeah. So you ruined David Fincher for me. You ruined him for me. Split. I got to say, it was just a great movie that I was, uh, I think what helped was going in, you know, expecting, to, every time I've gone to an M. Night film, I've seen all of his films. We watched The Visit together. Yeah, we did. Um, Ooh, a lot of people liked it. We didn't like it as much. Um, it was a little weird. It was, it was built for like, you I know, jumped, some jump scares. It was scares. a large you, you, pile of yeah. diapers. Like, that was a lot. Whew, there, was a, there were diapers in that movie That's that should not have been just, in that it movie. It was just the weird. Oh, and he put it in his, mm. the, um, the, the pie, the pie what? in the face. <laughs> Things that make you go. Uh, and I just went in like you know. Really, I, I've, I've always wanted Shyamalan to come back, and I'm so happy that he at least came back for Split. It was a great movie. I, I'm not someone who ever talks in movie theaters. I'm not someone who makes noise. I hate people who make noise in movie theaters. I was sitting by myself. I didn't go with anybody to see Split, and I was at Alamo. And when the music for Unbreakable started playing, whenever he I went, I man. audibly went. No way. Yeah. And then, like, when it, when uh, you know they did all the thing, and and the movie went to credits, I literally yelled out, "Fuck me!" in the theater, and people were like looking around at this crazy person in the movie theater. They're looking uh, around for the douchebag. Yeah. That is you. What and, uh, what you uh, are you anticipating the third one? Do you think M Night's gonna do like his version of the Avengers? And I, I don't want yeah. him to do Unbreakable next. I want him to move on to something else. He can do Unbreakable later. I mean, he's already come it's out and said build. he's, he's yeah, going to do it. Yeah, he said they're definitely doing he's another going one. To do I know, it. I know. Uh, it. And I'm hoping he's going to have Haley Joe Osmond in it as well, <laughs> and he learns how to control the ghosts, <laughs> and that's like his role. Does Mel Gibson show up as well? <laughs> Mel Gibson shows up. And, and, and the Walking Phoenix swing, swing, swing away, swing so, away. So Haley Joe has superpower, and then Walking Phoenix is kind of like the hot guy. He just guy. has a baseball bat. He's the bat. He's Harley Quinn. He's Harley Quinn. That kind of thing. What about what about Paul Giamatti? Is Zoe Deschanel going to be something in it? Because oh, she was in the happening, right? Yeah, yeah she was in the happening. She's gonna control wind. <laughs> she's like, she's like, run away from my breeze. She's gonna talk to the the. Well, the I guess plants. the happening wouldn't be in the same universe. But Mark Wahlberg is then. Yes, he's so. been spending time in nature, and he's now king of the bees. Yeah, because all the bees. He's like, hey, all the bees are gone. Did you guys know that? The bees are gone. You what? could be Mark what? Wahlberg. What? <laughs> Say hi to your mother for me. <laughs> you're not a fucking cop. Right, I'm gonna yeah. ask you, are you eyeing my lemon drink? And you're gonna respond. Are you eyeing my lemon drink? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? No. That's no. perfect. That's perfect, Mark, Mark, Marky Mark. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna uh, do a little bit of a, a comment section. We're gonna, Tyler and I are gonna go through some of your comments and we're going to read them and respond to them. Before we get to all of that, <laughs> I gotta say that um, not all ingredients are created equal. Fresh, high quality ingredients make a real difference, so it's important to know where your food comes from. For less than $10 per person, per meal, Blue Apron, they deliver seasonal recipes along with cool little pre-portioned ingredients that come in like little baggies and tups and, and that kind of thing. And they, they bring them to your house for, you know, 
delicious home-cooked meals. Um, you can choose from a variety of new recipes each week or let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you. So if you know what you want, you can get it. If you want someone just to send you food, that's cool too. Um, recipes, they're not repeated within years, so you're not going to just eat the same thing over and over again. That's also awesome. Um, Blue Apron's freshness guarantee, this is great, promises that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook. Or they'll make it right. So if something comes bad, you can let them know and they'll fix it. Um, customize your recipes each week based on your preferences. Um, you can just go into their website and do that as much as you want. Blue Apron has several delivery options you can choose from. You can figure out what fits your needs. And there's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. Like if you're going to go on vacation or if you're just like, you're not going to be around to cook, you can say, I need a break, and then they'll take a break and they'll send you ones next week. Um, you can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash enjoy. Uh, that's three meals for doing nothing other than, you know, you watched the show, you saw the promo, and you went on their website. So that's like a day of food for doing nothing. Um, I promise you'll love how good it feels and tastes to create really good, incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash enjoy. Blue Apron, it's a better way to cook. You should do it. It's just, it's free food. Who doesn't like free food? Hey. Hey. I, uh, Blue Apron is awesome. Uh, my girlfriend and I, uh, would cook it all the time. Uh, twist ending, though. She left me. So <laughs> there's that. We didn't use a stove. But to be clear, that had nothing to do with Blue had Apron's it, quality of product. Had nothing to do with Blue the Apron. The twist was. The twist was. Blue Apron. Tyler's unlovable. Blue Apron and, and held, your, <laughs> held your relationship together up until, <laughs> up until that point. Two minutes will answer as many comments as possible. And then when it's over, no more talking. Okay? So can we get two minutes on the clock? Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me get, uh, let me get ready. Let me get a. Do you have one right here? Uh, Wait for it. Wait for it. Ah, look at it. Oh, right, here we Simon. go. Sorry. Uh, Oscars uh, are useless and not based on how good the movie is. It's based on how much you can afford to bribe everyone. John, thoughts? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's Hollywood. Absolutely, yes. It still is. Um, how do you put Rogue One up for best stunt performance and not mention Donnie Yen? Yeah, I actually agree with you on that one. I, Donnie Yen was one of the best parts of the stunts, and I wish they'd just made a ninja movie about Donnie Yen as a Jedi. I did, yeah, great. Okay, I didn't see any of the best picture nominees, but I did see Rogue One three times. Why? <laughs> Um, we got to vote for Central Intelligence. We'll add up all the votes for that one. Uh, wait, where's, there's more. It's, it's, uh, it's, oh, man. I should have found There's a lot more. of Central Intelligence. Yeah. Uh, this show needs an audience, and it would be set. Well, we need an audience. Okay. I don't usually agree with Andy, <laughs> but I have to agree with Rogue One. Darth Vader is one of the most iconic villains in cinema history, and this was, I feel, his best action sequence. It was, but it's not, it's not worth wait, an actual wait, wait, award. Wait, wait, wait. What did you say? Yes, Darth Vader. Darth Vader, yes. Darth what? Vader, yes, but I don't think it deserves an Oscar. What? Rogue One? Darth Vader or Rogue One. Oh, get the fuck out of here. None of them deserve Oscars. All right. Oh, okay, yeah, good. You agree with me. All right. Um, uh, what well, about the Assassin's Creed fight choreography? Uh, choreography. Sorry, I'm them well. It was really well done as well. Why did you go see that movie? Which one? What? Assassin's Creed. Oh, Fassman don't go here. see that movie. Why not? Um, La La Land was great, but certainly overhyped and overrated. Don't go into movies about the hype or already. Go watch it for yourself. Don't base a movie and how much you like it on like, oh, people overhyped it. It's a good fucking movie. Hey, that person, you're absolutely fucking right. It was overrated. Shut <laughs> up. I forgot you were on this episode. Moonlight was the best picture. La La Land can go jerk off. Uh, correct me wrong, but were horror films just snubbed by the Maggies? I did realize that after the show that we should have talked about horror films because there are actually a lot of good horror films in 2016. Maybe we can talk about that later in the comments. Let's talk about the horror films in the comments. What were your favorite ones um, from 2016? Okay. Uh, oh, shit. Um, one more. Uh... Uh, uh, I have one. Uh, no one said Laser Team for the Oscar. That's because it doesn't deserve an Oscar. <laughs> 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 Maybe Laser Team 2 does. Yeah, Laser Team 2 is going to be one of the movies that does. Like, Laser Team 2 is the aliens to Alien. As my good friend LL Cool J once wrote, don't call it a comeback. M. Night Shyamalan's been on the ropes for years. Split, however free from the pressures of association with an enormous budget and elaborate marketing campaigns or studio meddling, that found our boy getting his groove back. Um, I mean... I honestly wouldn't have thought that schlocky boo movies were where M. Night belonged all along, but I'm glad he found him. Uh, who else would have believed that after Lady in the Water, after Earth, and just the most horrible thing in the world called The Last Airbender, that Shyamalan still had the power to not only make us go see a movie with his name on it, but also make that movie fun again. Many doubted. True believers, I like to consider myself one of them. We never lost hope. So, I'm going to raise my glass and say, so here's to you, M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, we were once lost to you. But now we are found again. You keep doing exactly what you're doing and nothing else for the foreseeable future. Just stay the path and we'll keep showing up. 
Um, I want to say thank you to my guest, Mr. Lynn Marquis, for coming around and having some fun. Thanks. And my, my, my good boy, Tyler. Tyler, why do you still have fucking things on your forearm? <laughs> Oh, what did you write? How much writing did you do? I don't remember doing any of this. Laser Team 2? What? Why does it say look at chest? Oh, God. I don't remember this at all. What Tyler's taking his shirt off. Huh? Of course he is. Slower. What is that? John isn't real? All right, whatever that means. Well, we'll be back next week. Until then, enjoy the show.